The Evening Standard reporting the source. The sources say that the Manchester suicide bomber, 22-year-old Salman Abidi, was in fact known to security services, but authorities believe that he did not pose an imminent threat. This on the heels of the Express reporting that nearly 3,500 potential terrorists are living in the United Kingdom right now. And this all raises the question, do we have the proper technology, resources, or even political will to prevent future terror attacks? Here to discuss, Ted Farnsworth, Paul Violas, and Ned Ryan. Ned, I'll start with you first on a political will. Political right. correctness, we know, oh. has created a quagmire that allows this stuff to fester, and uh, at some point... In the West, the United States and Europe, they're going to have to find a way to, to deal with that, aren't they? They are. I mean, Charles, you can have the world's best technology. You can have all the resources that you want to combat extremism. But if you are in defiance of common sense, all of that means nothing. <laughs> and you look at some of these policies of not only immigration policy, but vetting policy, of tracking policy. Again, 3,500 people they suspect. On top of that, Charles, there are 400 people that they know have come back fight, who fought for ISIS who are now back inside the United Kingdom. And I'm sitting here going, these are enemies of the state. Why are they, not, why are they living in the United Kingdom? Why aren't they living with the goats in caves back where they should be? And the other thing, too, that's in defiance of common sense, Charles, and Europe is going to have to figure this one out. If you are allowing hatred and violence to be preached on your soil, you are going to have to expel those ministers of hatred. And you're not, you cannot allow these people to be isolated anymore. I'm hearing reports that the, the Muslim community in Manchester is virtually isolated from the rest of British society. You know, my good buddy Raheem Kassam is coming out with a book this summer on no-go zones. If you allow no-go zones in Europe, you're going to see more of this continue, these acts no of violence. Uh, Paul, uh, Theresa May speaking, uh, they're going to deploy armed forces uh, there in place of police. And, and, and of course, many wonder, uh, you know, it's always after the fact that they get aggressive like this and they arm up and they start to, you know, why not unleash the policing power that we have already? Why not unleash the, the military-like power that we have already in a real offensive effort to eradicate threats that are known in Western countries, America as well as around, around in Europe? Well, why she's doing that right now, Charles, is because obviously they know more than what they're telling us with respect to the depth of their investigation and the number of people that they suspect being involved. They also realize that there's a high probability that there'll be multiple attacks because of the intelligence that's coming in. So they're deploying that extra effort right now to make sure that is they can be able to deal with that. Is there a way to deploy it ahead of time? In other words, almost every time we get the same sort of scenario. Right. Massive uh, terror attack, lots of innocent people are dead. Whoa, the person that committed it once was in the, the authority. Authorities interviewed him once or twice or three times sure. before. They knew this person was a question mark or a problem. Why not aggressive policing then? B bottom line, Charles, it's a business decision. Are we willing to spend the money from either tax dollars or corporate dollars to up the ante and hire more bodies? There are only, and it could be England, it could be the FBI. We only have so many people, but there are a lot more people we need to watch than people we have to watch them. So that's why we need to start marrying more technology. Well, let's speak to the man with the technology, Ted Farnsworth. Okay. Ted, you and I spoke on the phone. How was that, Dad? That was a good line. It was a good yeah, segue. Yeah, okay, segue. Sorry, sorry. Uh, and you talked about a myriad of things that, that could help out and ultimately maybe even a playing field from the data collection to artificial intelligence, sure. facial recognition. Explain it for look, us. Look, one of the things that we have is a, a new technology, facial recognition, which I think you're going to see more and more used in the technology space. Also artificial intelligence. So as you combine those two intelligence right there together and you start combining billions and billions of pieces of data because right now you're overloaded all the governments are overloaded they can't figure out what's who's doing what but also goes back to political correctness of exactly. what about your privacy let's say facial let's, recognition london, privacy. The, london is known and i'm not sure about manchester but we know they have a lot of uh, closed circuit television there correct is it it could could technology eventually be adapted so that uh, there's facial recognition out there, and you can see somewhere near a venue, stress, their face is stressed, or the face raises a red flag because they have been in police custody before, a right. person of interest before. Absolutely. And you can, it, will this sort of give us then a chance, technology, is that a great way to have a chance to be able to combat this? Yes, and it will also pick it up ahead of time because you're watching these people come in, like our facial technology will tell you right now, we'll be able to see people coming in good guy, bad guy. Separate the people. Now what you're going to deal with there is political correctness. What about the privacy, the privacy of the right. people? But you'll in? know, though, from their facial expressions sure and the stress Against on their face. Against your databases. Real quick, Absolutely. Ned. 
No, I was just going to say, Charles, this again comes down to there's amazing technology out there. There are amazing resources. It comes down to political will and are people willing to make hard decisions that in the short term, you know, we're, they're going to get political blowback on, but in the long term are the right decisions to make. That's what yeah. it ultimately comes down to. It's time to save people's lives. I think That's that right. might be the ultimate decider. There. Guys, there. thank you all I very agree. much. Appreciate Thanks, it. Charles.